Hey, what's going on, Alan? How you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? Absolutely. Arrow? That's, that's me, man. Kind of a weird, strange name, right? I love it. <laughs> I love archery. <laughs> hey, I got to ask you a personal question in the way that I'm going to I'm going to bring my present place of now in the Carolinas where we are currently in in a flash flood right now. And you're up there with alone. How is it that you deal with flash floods like this or the fires of Maui? Because, I mean, I can't imagine you in that place of wild where you're, you're not protected by a roof. Uh, well, just, I guess, training and uh, just being ready for whatever whatever nature has to offer us. I mean, building your shelter is a really important uh, thing to, to do. It's got to be solid and waterproof. And we actually had quite a few different clothing items to help us get through those times. And obviously there was a safety team. So if we were in a life-threatening situation, uh, we could tap out and uh, get help. When you say that you prepared for it, in what way did you practice for it? Because, I mean, there's one of the things I talk about on iHeartRadio today is how did you protect yourself in moments like that? Uh, well, just making sure that your shelter site was, was on high ground. Um, there were no dead snags that could fall on your shelter. Right. Um, like, so you're, you're asking me how would I, how would I, survive like a a singularly deadly situation not long-term survival Let's, is that correct well it's basically what you know preparing for it in other words the before the middle and the ending in other words we all write yeah. the story before it happens and we all sit there and mentally we get ready for what could happen and it's it, that, that's always been a yeah. fascination to me in, in in the way of going okay how did you because i'm a third degree black belt i make sure that i i prepare myself for every day how do you do it as right. well well, I, uh, I, I guess for the mental aspect of the game, I, I read quite a bit about meditation and, yes. and, th and thinking, thinking a positive thought, uh, keeping my mind positive all the time, being thankful for, for what I get out there, and uh, just always trying to stay positive and not panic in, in situations. Uh, I trained for edible, what plants were edible. I trained uh, knowing what sort of fish were available in the lake we are going to be at. Uh, I studied various different shelters that would uh, work for a variety of different environments depending on what was available. Um, yeah, uh, several different types of uh, fire pits that you can put in your shelter, all those sorts of all those sorts of things. I gained weight, I practiced with my bow and arrow. Um, yeah. See, that's that's the kind of stuff that I find inspiring because we, we are that generation right now that would rather hire somebody to do something for us. And so a show like Alone on History Channel, to me, inspires the heart to say, come on, man, don't sit around, go do something, and you guys physically do it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing experience. And uh, I kind of wanted to be, I wanted to see how far... I could push myself physically and mentally just kind of as a test, you know. I know it sounds strange, but I wanted to see what that was like, mm -hmm. how far I could go. And to be out there in nature, my God, I mean, you and I have one thing in common. We love the outdoors. I mean, I mean, my studio sits in this forest, and, and I love watching nature happen right in front of me. There's, there's, there's a lot you can learn from all things that are natural. 100%. Absolutely agree with you. What, what is it that, that spoke to you the loudest? Because I, I'm a tree hugger. I, I'm, I'm also a rock lover. But at the same time, I love the hawk when it flies over my head. What teaches you when you're out there in the wild? Uh, I love the animal experiences that, that I have. I had a pretty uh, spiritual type experience with an owl when, when I first got there. Mm. Um, yeah, this, I don't know if you've watched the episode. I think it's on episode one or, or two, but I had a, an owl come in and do circles around around my head, like within, you know, 15, 20 yards. <laughs> and it wouldn't leave. It kept on landing on the trees, landing on the ground. It would leave for about five minutes. It would come back, circle around me again, leave, come back, circle around me again. It was very, very interested in me. And I was literally 10 feet from it filming it. It was a, it was a pretty amazing experience. They're, they're powerful totem animals dude i mean an owl is a spiritual animal that teaches you at the same time it also protects you and it's reminding you that hey look you're not in this thing alone so even though you had 10 items that you could take with you that are man-made that owl was there to protect you i like to think that yeah it was it was amazing so that and owls are did it did it inspire you because most owls are nighttime creatures i mean you you had an owl in the daylight 
Well, it, it was at dusk. Okay. Yeah, it was at it was just starting to get dark. Yeah, it's all on film. They they did a they did a pretty big piece on it, and you know I got emotional stuff because my 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 dad has passed passed away, and uh, you know since that time we've my family members. I know it's I know it sounds crazy, um, but you know there, there's we've had quite a few really neat experiences with, with owls similar to this mm-hmm. one my, my brothers and i so it was, it was pretty cool i i invite you to read ted andrews because ted andrews it speaks of the spiritual connected to owls and other animals as well and 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 you're the one that brought up that you lost your father owls are connected to that they are the protectors of that next step in life and and so so i i'm not shocked that that, that you shared that story with me it, because owls protect humans cool Awesome. So, so did you keep a journal or anything? Because I mean, you, this, this is a learning experience. Anytime you put your mind, body, and soul through a journey like this, this had to have been a learning experience for you. Oh yeah, very much. So we, no, we we weren't allowed to uh, to bring any pens or pencils, oh and we didn't have we didn't have paper to write on. We could have used birch bark, but no, I I would have liked to uh, record a journal. That would have been awesome, and just some of the neat experiences that I have, and uh, when you know. I'd, I, I write poetry sometimes as well. I would have loved to rip off a couple of poems when I was out there, but uh, usually you're pretty busy, and <clears throat> no, it, it never happened. So no, there was no recording, but I pretty much remember every day in my mind. So you being a school teacher, what what kind of an experience do you take to your students now in the way that you, because you know how students are nowadays, they quit so easily, and you have been trained now to work through the storms. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to reveal to my students that I was even on the show. Wow. I had to lie to everybody. I, I, I made up some elaborate story that was up north guiding. So it wasn't until the very end of the year, maybe, uh, I can't remember when we were allowed to say it, but um, yeah, it was. I only got to teach students for a few weeks with them knowing that it was on, on the show and it was near the end of the year. So uh, no, I, I never really got to implement any of those strategies with this year's bunch. Now that you've been on this journey on the History Channel on Alone, do you find yourself respecting Lewis and Clark a little bit more? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, uh, all, I mean, all, all those, all the early explorers and um, and people that lived before us were, yeah, it kind of gave, gave, gave you a sense. But, uh, yeah, definitely it makes you appreciate a lot, lot of things in life more. Just, uh, you know, how how much we have that, that humans in, in this time – you know, in in Canada and Europe and and USA, especially in all developed countries, that we we have more than we need. Mm-hmm. That was a big lesson out there. Oh, I'm just so proud of you. I really own a history channel. They're going to learn how to survive, and that's the one thing that I I wish that more of us could do. And and we're going to live through you, Alan. Awesome, appreciate it. Well, please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Well, thank you. All right, man. You be brilliant today, okay? All right, man. You too. Nice chatting with you.